Oh. All right, chicky, chicky, chick, checking that song. Oh my gosh, we're doing the thing. What's going on, everybody? Eric Barassa here. Sorry, it's been a hot minute. Uh, got a lot going on with the music school and the business, but that's not what you're here for. Let's talk about music school. Should you go to music school? Should you go get a degree in music? Is it worth it? What are the pros? What are the cons? Well, heck, as someone who's been there, done that, I figured I should, uh, I had a duty to kind of share my experience with you guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you kind of a background in how I got on the path of getting to music school, what my experience was actually like between two different music schools, um, Hope College in Holland, Michigan, very small liberal arts school, and then Berkeley College of Music in Boston, Mass, um, over by near Worcester. Uh, wicked tight. Okay, that's enough of that. Anyway, and then I'm going to conclude by by talking about is it worth it to to go to music school. So a little bit of background. Um, I started playing guitar when I was 13 years old, and as soon as I did, that's all I wanted to to do with my life. Um, I knew I wanted to be a professional musician. Decided I was going to go to college for music because it wasn't really an option for me to not go to college. College. Even though neither of my parents graduated from college, uh, they both had a little bit of undergrad schooling, um, but the expectation was that I was going to go to college. And I didn't really know that there were other options like for professional musicians. And really even that going to music school probably wasn't the best uh, option for me. But what do I know? My parents wanted me to study uh, business. And I was like, I don't want to study business. And then they said, well, we at least want you to study music education. And I said, I don't want to study music education. I want to be a performer. Well, long story short, those of you who know me, I now run a music education business. <laughs> so touche, parents. Um, but at the time I said, I want to get a performance degree and they were very disappointed. And I thought, Hey, I'm the one paying for most of my college education. They did help me where they could with, uh, one or two small loans, but I paid for the bulk of my college experience. So I thought I may as well do the thing I want to do. So um, I went to apply for the music program at Hope College in Holland, Michigan. They only had classical and jazz. It was very traditional. They didn't have any of the modern stuff that you get at like a Berkeley College of Music. And Berkeley was really the place I wanted to go to. You know, I read about Steve Vai and John Mayer and people like that who, who went to Berkeley College of Music. And it was like, that was the place to go. Um, but I didn't even apply to Berklee College of Music because I didn't know how to read music. I really didn't know anything about music theory other than what I read from, uh, you know, the, the Guitar World magazine lessons. I, I wasn't, I didn't have any lessons really up until that point. Um, so I just knew I could play, I could write a little bit, and I wanted to keep playing music. So I went and I applied for the music program and they said, uh, classical or jazz? And I was like... I honestly, this is how naive I was uh, at 17 years old. I didn't know the difference between classical and jazz music at all. Um, and I, I was like, well, Yngwie Malmsteen, his music is very classically influenced. So I was like, classical? And they said, okay, cool. You're going to need to buy a classical guitar. And I was like, ah, dang it. I was like, I don't want to buy, I have to buy another guitar. I just want to use my electric guitar. But um, yeah, my uh, my audition piece was Paganini's Fifth Caprice by Ingve, played very slowly uh, and not even that well. And I don't know if I had to play anything else. I may have had to play something else. And then I think they gave me some like sight reading tests and every with all which I failed miserably. Well, I guess because there are so few people in the classical guitar program at Hope College, which at the time I think had like three thousand kids uh, enrolled at the school. Um, that they're like, oh, here, here's a little bit of money. So they gave me some grant money um, towards my my lessons, uh, which which was cool. And um, I started my classical guitar training in the fall of 2003. 
Uh, I did not really care for classical guitar. We were reading music, but I had the most wonderful instructor, Rob Lunn, uh, R-O-B-L-U-N-N. You can find him online. He's he's a pretty popular classical guitar Instagrammer, and he's got a great website. Uh, I'll try to remember to put the link down in the description. If you're into classical guitar or studying classical guitar at all, he he's awesome. Yeah, he, he was my teacher for four years. He's the one who really taught me how to learn music. He And he also taught me how to teach music properly. And it was such a great experience. He was so patient with me. I hardly ever practiced. All I wanted to do was play like Joe Satriani and uh, shred guitar and punk rock. So that's how I spent most of my freshman year. I would uh, take my stuff to the practice room and um, with my electric guitar and my amp while other people were practicing their classical and their jazz and I'd be practicing rock and roll and like trying not to be a weirdo and get noticed by anybody else. And I also started recording my first album. It's called Get a Real Job uh, on just a, a, an Apple laptop computer that I checked out from the music library. And um, I would just... I would make these like drum loops and then I would record guitar parts just with headphones plugged in through the air to the laptop, right? So the recording quality was horrible and I did my whole first album like that, but it was such a good learning experience for me and I have fond memories of doing that in the practice rooms. I had to make sure it was late at night, but it had to be before the library closed, but while nobody else was really using the practice rooms next to me because otherwise their horns and their strings would bleed into my recordings. Um, so that was really cool. That was, that was really neat. And I would practice my classical guitar, maybe like 10, 15 minutes a day, three times a week. And then I'd practice the crap out of it right before I had my lesson. Right. We all do that. We're, you know, I was, I was not a great student. Um, so I just kind of did the bare minimum to get by with my classical guitar lessons. It wasn't until my sophomore year that we started working on Via Lobos Prelude Number One. That's when I really start to started to fall in love with classical guitar. And now to this day, 15 years later, 17, 18 years later, I still love uh, the classical guitar a lot. Um, but anyway, my music classes, when, when you're studying music, it, you kind of get to bypass all the regular classes. At least that's how it was at Hope College. It's a liberal arts school, so you're supposed to study a little bit of everything, but um, I had to take, I think, like one English class, one math class, one uh, religion class, because it was, it was a Christian college, um, and I had to take uh, like one history class or something like that. It was like one semester I had one regular class and everything else was music. It was awesome. I loved it. I loved it. Was it, There were only maybe like 30 students in my whole class for the music department. So we all got to know each other really well. It became a pretty tight knit community. We got to know our professors really well over the years. We'd have the same professors year after year depending on what classes they were teaching. Um, and so it was intense. It was really, really hard because I didn't have a background in band uh, or orchestra. I didn't know how to read any music. That first semester, by golly, let me tell you, having to learn how to read music um, would, required a lot. I had to spend a lot of time on that, a lot of time on theory. Um, but the good news is by the end of that first semester, I was pretty on an even keel with everybody else. So I think, I don't know for sure, but I think I had to work harder than most music majors that first semester. But then after that, I, I could work at about the same level as, as everybody else. Um, the one benefit to not knowing how to read music at all was that I didn't have a preference to treble clef or bass clef, uh, like a lot of players do. So anyone who is a non-piano player usually really struggled with reading one or the other. But since I was bad at both, I learned how to get good at both pretty much simultaneously and then uh, particularly excelled with treble clef later because of classical guitar. All right, so that was my experience in learning how to read music that first semester. Let's talk about ear training. My ear training 101 class, God, what a disaster. Um, I had such a wonderful professor and... Um, we would go around the room and our teacher would make us uh, have to sing certain intervals or she would, and I'm not even a good singer, and she would also play intervals for us and we'd have to name what they were. 
The other thing we had to do with, was rhythmic dictation. So she would write out, uh, or she would tap a rhythm, and we would have to write out what that rhythm was. Holy cow, that was so hard. That was for sure my hardest class. Um, but I really, I really learned a lot from from that. Loved theory. All the voice majors hated music theory. All the instrumentalists pretty much loved theory or tolerated it. I loved music theory. I, I kind of ate it up. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Um, we had classes like Eurythmics. It was a half credit, and we had to basically dance around with ribbons. It was like ribbon dancing, um, and it was all about learning to feel what was in between the beats, what interpret the music. It was very like... Um, I, I don't know. It was you. You basically got graded on participation in that class, but it was cool. We Dr. Ashbrenner was was an awesome professor, and I, I really loved him. Uh, rest in peace, Dr. Ashbrenner. Um, and then let's see. Basically, I had like eight classes every semester, right? So normally you would have like four or five in a regular degree, but in music you had to take all these like half credit classes. Not, you know, most classes are like two, three credits. I don't remember exactly. I wanna say most classes are like two credits. The, there were a lot of like half credit classes, right? So my guitar lessons were a half credit and then you had to pick a minor instrument. Um, and because of my classical guitar fingernails that I had to grow out, I convinced them to let me have jazz guitar as my minor <laughs> instrument. So I did some uh, classical guitar as well as some jazz guitar and uh, was not particularly good at either of them, but uh, that was cool. Those were each a half credit um, for taking in a half hour private lesson a week. And then we had to do, I had to do a jazz combo, which was like a one hour rehearsal every week and a performance at the end of the semester. And that was only a half credit. Um, so you spent a lot of time on these things and you got very few credits uh, for them, but it was so cool because it just immersed me in, in that world. Um, and I, I really enjoyed the experience. So as we progressed and I did more and more music, um, I was feeling really confident about myself as a player and as a musician. But the scary thing is once it comes time to graduate, uh, it's like, what are you going to do? Well, all the music education majors, you know, they were going to go get teaching jobs. All of the performance majors were going to grad school to get their master's and their doctorates, probably so that they could teach at the university level. Um, I'm pretty sure I was the only undergrad performance major that did not have a plan for what I was going to do. I even had to write uh, like my plan before I graduated of like, what are you going to do when you graduate music school? I had no stinking idea. Uh, so I wrote that I was going to move back to Texas, get my high school punk band back together. And, um, and then I was going to just teach guitar on the side until I made a living as a rock star. Uh, that's, that's literally what I wrote. <laughs> there was not a whole lot of support for like, here's what you're, here's how you're going to make money when you graduate. Fortunately, my guitar teacher, Rob Lunn, was super supportive and mentored me through like how to teach, um, but I didn't I didn't learn any business skills, uh, any real world like here's how to survive as a musician. So I was just kind of on my own with that and and sort of had to figure it out as I went. Um, let's talk about Berkeley now, uh, and then I'll give my thoughts overall on just music school in general. So when I was like a sophomore, I think the summer of my sophomore year, um, I was back home working in this horrible factory, working the, the graveyard shift, just like putting to display signs together for tobacco companies. Um, and I was like so grateful that I was getting a degree and that I was gonna have options once I had my degree because I did not want that kind of work for the rest of my life. And there were people that had been working there 20, 30 years. I was grateful that it was just a, a, a good paying summer job. And uh, it's the only job I ever had that I truly hated. Um, but I had a couple of good friends working with me at the time. I w had mentioned to them like, hey, I always wanted to go to Berkeley. And they're like, well, well why don't you transfer? And I was like, oh my gosh. I know how to read music now. Like I'm actually kind of a decent musician at this point. So I maybe could get in at this point. Well, 
Come to find out years later, once I went to Berkeley, I actually probably could have gotten in as a high schooler. Um, and it, it just depends on what you're wanting to do. I didn't, it, it actually is not that, it, at least at that time in 2005, it wasn't that hard to get into uh, Berkeley College of Music. So if you're considering it and you're like, you're not sure if you have the, the current talent level for it or anything, I would go ahead and apply. Go to their audition, apply, just do the best you can and, and see if you can get in because there's, you, you might think you can't, but there's probably a better chance than you think that, that you could go there. Um, so I, I applied and decided to transfer, uh, pretty much no one supported me on this. My parents, my best friend's parents, uh, any adults I consulted said, this is a bad idea because it's so expensive. I mean, back at that time it was $50,000 a year and my private university was $30,000 a year, which was already super expensive compared to like in-state places, which were like 15,000 a year. So you're talking a lot of money for uh, to, to go to Berkeley, but I said I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Will somebody co-sign this line, co-sign this loan that I'm getting? And they said no, no one would co-sign the, lo the, the lo co-sign the loan with me. So I got a super high, like 10% interest rate, and I was just like, forget it. I'm going anyway. Um, applied and then went to do applied so that by the time I was a senior. I, I would be able to transfer to Berkeley. Um, so I spent my junior year preparing for that transition. And in the spring, I'll never forget, uh, my dad came and my sister came and picked me up at music school. The audition was down at like the University of Chicago or, or some like high school Chicago arts school. I think it was like a high school um, in like right in the heart of Chicago. It felt very like, look at me, I'm in the city, I'm doing city things. And on a guitar I had never even really played on before, uh, auditioned for Berkeley College of Music with Satriani's Surfing with the Alien. And I did an okay job. I did, it, I wasn't like a stellar performance, um, but you know, I did okay. You know, a Strat with single coils and a non-floating whammy bar. <laughs> Uh, playing through an amp I had never played through. Like you just show up and you plug into whatever they have. And uh, they had me do some like um, reading tests. Uh, like they're like, you have five minutes to um, practice these lines of music and then come in and play them for us. Uh, so that was kind of cool. And I, I felt okay about it. And then they actually gave me a, a decent amount of money to go to Berkeley. I was, I was pretty shocked about that. Um, but I guess it was more like grant money, scholarship money. Um, so I was stoked. I transferred to Berkeley. My family drove me from Michigan to Boston, one of the greatest road trips of my life. And um, here, here's what happened when I got to Berkeley. Okay, this video is already getting like way too long. But let me just share briefly my experience about Berkeley. You're in the heart of Boston. Berkeley does like mo a modern approach to music, whereas the school I came from was traditional, like uh, traditional classical music theory. So a lot of the rules and things I had learned did not apply. Um, and so it was a bit confusing when I went to take the tests to test out of like the beginner courses I couldn't because they were asking me like jazz theory questions. And so I ended up in like the most basic level courses. Um, and I, it was like doing freshman year all over again. And what I found was I was able to just skate through those classes, no problem. Like I could sleep through them. In fact, my favorite class ended up being an English class, not not even my, my music classes, because it was kind of been there, done that. Once I sort of learned the modern jargon, I was like, oh, now this is easy. Now it makes sense. Now I could, like two weeks in, I was like, now I could test out of all of all of this stuff. Um, and what here's what I found, comparing that with my small liberal arts college that no one's ever heard of uh, and, and Berkeley College of Music, this prestigious music school, my classes at Berkeley were not better than what I got at Hope. They were about on par, right? They were, it was about the same experience in terms of the quality of instruction. Um, so if your goal is just to look for a good quality education, um, you, you don't have to go to Berkeley for that. However, here's what Berkeley offers. 
And that's opportunity, connection. This is the thing I didn't get at the time. The importance of being out as much as possible, connecting with other players, connecting with the community, connecting with your professors. Most of the professors are like professional touring and gigging musicians. Um, so like my guitar teacher at Berkeley, uh, he played in the band Fate's Warning, and that would have been a really good connection for me to have. Had I tried and had I like, you know, practiced the stuff he had given me. Um, and then, but of course, you know, I spent all my time just like recording my own music and, you know, dinking around, hanging out, seeing the sights of Boston, um, and going out to bars for the first time. I wish I would have worked harder. Uh, my end of semester guitar test at Berkeley was for Joe Stump. So any shredders out there, you guys know who Joe Stump is. Man, he walked in dressed in the all black leather, just as intimidating as can be. And I played for him. He's quizzing me on all these different kinds of chords and scales. And I sucked. I really wasn't very good. And he was just kind of like, eh, good enough. Um, you know, so they let me pass. But uh, I, yeah, I really didn't apply myself the way I should. But my, one of my other favorite classes was my guitar lab. So this was basically like a guitar class with like three people. And we had this great professor who would share all this wisdom with us. We were studying guitar pieces. He turned me on to Pat Metheny's Bright Size Life. And like he would assign us to like, okay, write your own solo for this. And we do chord construct, like chord analysis of like Steve Vai's Tender Surrender. That was awesome because it wasn't, it was cooler than the private lesson actually uh, because I, I would like, I had this camaraderie with the other two guys and we would talk and we would bounce ideas off of each other. It really was the coolest. And uh, that professor told us how he didn't practice that much in school. He said it was after he graduated that he did the bulk of his practicing. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's funny. Well, sure enough, I did the same thing. After I graduated, that's when I started practicing uh, way more. One of the other drawbacks of going to Berkeley was that you basically are starting over. They treated me as a freshman when I was really a senior. I had already racked up a lot of debt from my other school. And I was like, look, I, I know this is going to take me a little bit longer be, because, you know, it would be foolish for me to think I could transfer as a senior and graduate in one year. I know some things weren't going to transfer over. I thought it would maybe take me two, two and a half years. They're like, no, it's going to take you four years. Basically, nothing transferred. Um, I didn't discover this till I got there because I wasn't the most organized person. I could have found this out ahead of time, but I didn't. I just wanted to go. So like a month into my experience there, I called Hope College and I was like, hey, if, if I transfer back to Hope, can I still graduate on time? And they're like, yeah, we can do that. So that's what I did. Did my senior classical guitar recital back at Hope College uh, in the spring. So it was like fall 2006 that I was at Berkeley College of Music. Spent one semester there, transferred back, um, you know, met, met a nice girl while I was there, met some great friends. We had a good time. I worked at the Virgin Record Store uh, when it closed down, saw Alice Cooper, and uh, one of the guys from the Baronet Ladies came in. And then I also worked at, um, I, I worked a lot. I, I worked all through college. Um, and so then I, uh, when Virgin Record Store closed down, um, I got a job at uh, a comic a really famous comic store right there on that strip over by Commonwealth on Boston, but I forget the name of it right now. And uh, like Kevin Bacon and his wife came in while I was there. So it was like, it was a really happening place. There was a lot going on, had great friends, went to the wildest party of my life at MIT. <laughs> um, and you know, had I stayed, I think I would have done a better job of getting plugged in, getting connected with more musicians. Fortunately, uh, some of the people I met, I'm still friends with to this day, and um, and it was it was neat. It was a really neat experience, um, and to have seen the practice rooms where like uh, you know freaking Dream Theater practiced, and uh, and like one one of my neighboring roommates was um, the nephew of Carlos Santana, 
We met another guy who we said looked just like Matthew Perry from Friends. And he was like, oh, yeah, that's my uncle. Right. So there was it was a really cool collection of people that were there. And I, I wish I would have spent more time getting plugged into the community. And again, I think if I had stayed, I think I would have done that. So if you're going to go to pl to like Berkeley College of Music, you got to get plugged in and connected as much as possible. Spend as little time in your dorm room as possible. Spend as much time getting out and meeting people. Um, anyway, Boston's a cool town and uh, yeah, pretty, pretty neat experience. Okay, so all that to say, um, th this video is like, oh my God, so so long. Okay, so should you go to music school? Um, I, 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 that was like a super unorganized, long rambling, but hopefully that sort of gave you an idea of, of what that experience might be like for, for you. Do you need a degree to be a professional musician? No. In fact, I, I don't recommend it. If your goal is to become a pro touring musician, the best thing you can do is find an area where that is happening, you know, like LA or Nashville or, or New York or even like Boston, the Boston music scene, and just start getting plugged in. A great way to get plugged in is Berkeley College of Music. That's a good place. Like Hope College, not a good place to get connected with the wider music industry. Berkeley College of Music was the place to make those connections. So if that's your goal, then that would be a really good option. A lot of people don't even graduate from Berkeley because they end up getting hooked up with a tour or, um, or, or some pro gig, which is what they were after anyway. And then they're like, okay, bye music school. I don't need you anymore. I've found my way. Um, I think if you're not totally sure what you want your life to look like, but you're passionate about music and you have to get a degree in something, get your degree in music. The studies show that if you have a bachelor's degree, by and large, you're making a considerable amount of more money than someone who just has a high school degree. Uh, I found that all of my friends that have undergraduate degrees, half of them don't even have careers in what they got their degree for. So I would say for a lot of careers, what you get your degree in kind of doesn't matter. So you may as well get it in what you want to do. Uh, and then figure it out from there. You know, it's if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a nurse or if you're gonna be a teacher, then you definitely want to get that. Well, I became a school teacher anyway, and I didn't get a degree in teaching. So you know, just get the degree in whatever you want. Um, but again, if you your goal is to become a professional musician, no, you don't need to go to music school. If you want to teach at the university level, then yeah, you need to go to music school. Um, if you want to be involved in that world. Um, but for, for making connections and stuff, Berkeley College of Music is a great place for that. So anyway, let me know, did you go to music school? Did you go to Berkeley? Were we friends? Were we roommates? Tell me about your experience with music school. And, and I'd love to know if you're debating going to music school, uh, if you regret going to music school, if you're so glad that you went, let me know what it's like, uh, for you, you know, like, and subscribe if you made it this far. Gee, goodness gracious. If you made it this far, you are a total trooper. That was my experience and uh, I'll see you guys next time.